AFR On Demand is brought to you by Breck Golf. Try Beaver Creek today, just 20 minutes from downtown Baton Rouge in the Zachary area. They've got a PGA Tour driving range, a short game practice area, 30 to 40 yard practice shots. It's a great place to chip and putt and practice if you don't have time for a full round. Book your tee time today, golf.breck.org, golf.breck.org. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge studio. Let's ride! Hour two, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. It's AFR, powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. Matt? This is Jack O'Neill, and I hate Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Mm-hmm. Yes. So. And Mr. Toby Tomlin. All right, we're here glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Sean Salisbury, one hour from right now. Uh, The news cycle never starts spinning around college football, not just with on-the-field action, but everything happening ancillary as well. Ross Dellinger, nobody better covering it. Yahoo Sports, he's on Twitter at Ross Dellinger. Uh, Delly, how are you, man? Good, Matt. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Hey, let me start, if I could, with the SEC Big Ten news from a day ago. Are, Are they trying to... Uh, collaborate on like a scheduling alliance, kind of like uh, what we said. Wasn't it the ACC and the Big 12 that did like an alliance a couple of years ago to try to prevent them from pillaging each other, and then they they went astray, or it was Big 10? Like, what, fill, fill us in. Fill, yeah, I, it's it's so confusing now. Catch, yeah. Remind me. Yeah, well, la- last week, uh, I think ESPN had a story yesterday, but uh, – they were a little late, I must say, Matt. Uh, last week, uh, last Thursday, I had a story, a story out about about the Big Ten and SEC's meeting. Take that, um, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ESPN, as it often does, acts like uh, nobody else exists. Um, but, Ooh. yeah, so I had a story last Thursday about the SEC and Big Ten uh, uh, having a meeting in Nashville next week. It's a joint meeting of athletic directors. And uh, they're going to discuss mainly three things, uh, Matt. The first thing is the House antitrust settlement case. Um, the second thing is this scheduling kind of arrangement or partnership, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then third uh, is the future of the college football playoff in, in the format. Um, so those are kind of the main talking points that I expect will be discussed uh, in Nashville among the uh, 32 athletic directors. Um and it's a big meeting. As I wrote last week, Matt, this doesn't happen very often. In fact, NCAA folks tell me they had never heard of this happening, where you have two major conferences, um, their athletic directors meeting in person for a joint gathering. So it's it's significant, and I think the issues they talk about is significant. And because the Big Ten and SEC have distanced themselves financially, resources, all that stuff, um, what they say often is what goes. Um, so this is an important meeting. And to get back one last thing to your point, there was the alliance, yes, between the Big Ten and the ACC and the Pac-12 yes. uh, that lasted about 10 months. Um, <laughs> it was basically a quote. It was described as a general, gentleman's agreement. They were going to do a scheduling agreement along with other uh, things, I guess. Um, but the, the biggest thing, part of the alliance, Matt, was they had – basically had a verbal pledge with one another, a promise that they would not uh, take one another's teams. In 10 months in, Kevin Warren and the Big Ten took USC and UCLA. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that was so good. (laughs) You know me. I'm an agent of chaos. I love chaos in college football, so that was fantastic to see how that all went down. Hey, so with the SEC and the Big Ten, what do you suspect? I'm asking you to speculate here. Like, What do you suspect will come of this? Well, I think there's going to be, um, let's start with those, you know, break down all the three things, right? So the first thing is the house settlement. And specifically, the NCA will 
very, you know, I've written this, it's no breaking news. They'll, they'll be, they will not be a part of the enforcement arm of the new revenue sharing model that's coming to college athletics if this settlement is approved, which we don't know yet. Um, and so I think a big focus of the meeting will be what will be the new enforcement arm? Who will be over it? What will it entail? Okay. How will it police outside third-party NIL, collectives, all that stuff? So that's one. Two, the college football playoff format, uh, right? I, I was on your show, I think, in the spring when the Big Ten and SEC pitched uh, a proposal to other commissioners um, uh, of, about the college football playoff format, and that, that proposal included – Multiple automatic qualifiers for each league, as many as four each, um, would get AQs into the playoff, uh, and then you would have maybe two each for the Big Ten or Big Twelve and ACC, uh, and then you would have a group of, of at-large schools. So that was a proposal pitched back in in February, March. It kind of stalled. It got a lot of backlash, and it kind of was put on the back burner. So I would imagine they will come out of this meeting that. With a more with more of a uh, thinking on how they want to approach a format, because the Big Ten and SEC, along with television partner ESPN, controls the format at, starting in 2026 and beyond. It's kind of up in the air. The format is, okay. and then the last thing is the scheduling arrangement and partnership. I would expect the Big Ten and SEC uh, to play one another more often in the regular season and maybe even in the non CFP bowls in the postseason. Okay. Um, so we're obviously moving, and Ross Dellinger is our guest. We're obviously moving closer, Ross, to the reality that I think you, I don't, I don't want to speak for you. It's what I've always assumed is going to happen is that your like conferences, the structure as we know it is going to dissolve and you're going to have like one homogenous blob. They'll split it however they want. It'll just be college, college football existing as, as its own. Do you agree with that? And like, how much closer are we to that reality where you just basically cut from the bottom in college football? Yeah, the Super League, right? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, how, fact, exactly. Today, however you want to phrase it, right? Yeah, today, actually, as it turns out, the, the Super League proposal um, that has been kind of circulated around pretty good the last few months was actually released by the organization um, that... Uh, that that's kind of been organizing this this super league. There's a few ads and school presidents involved. Um, uh, not many in the Big Ten and SEC have been a part of that, but it was actually released today. It, it was the super a super league type of proposal. So, look, I, I think because of the financial resource gap that continues to grow, we continue to move in the direction of the power conference, you know, split off, breakaway from everybody else. Um, they play in a lot of ways. They play the same game on the field, but it's a much different game off the field when it comes to resources and financials. And now with revenue sharing, right? A lot of group of five programs. I mean, that they can't, they can't share revenue with athletes and those at the upper level of the power leagues can. And so there's just a lot of differences in, and we see more and more that there's going to be a separation. The big question is Matt is, Will there be a separation? Will it be a separation, you know, with the, the SEC Big Ten moving away from, from everybody else? Will it be a separation of SEC Big Ten, Big 12, and ACC moving away from everybody else? What will this look like? And we're getting closer and closer probably to finding the answer. But the answer is there will be separations, right? There's already separation, and there will be more, uh, more formal separation within college athletics. Anything uh, significant about UTEP joining the Mountain West? Like, what is what? I mean, aside from just rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic here, what what does this mean? Yeah, it's odd, kind of what's happening out west, um, and it probably speaks to the um, situation in the industry right now. That you have uh, the Pac-12 rebuilding by taking Mountain West programs and now each conference the Pac-12 and the Mountain West now currently have seven members basically um so you would think well it would make sense for them to merge right and have a 14 team conference but that doesn't seem to be um something that's going to happen um so we're kind of in a situation where as you mentioned 
everybody's just um, yeah, trading deck chairs here um, and moving them around and moving money around and trading money and trading exit fees. It's uh, quite bizarre and makes no sense at all. And it's why most uh, folks, I think, in college athletics believe the group of five or group of six now, if you count the Pac-12, uh, because they are not a power league, uh, sure. that you would yeah. you would consider that they all should get together, Matt, work together, and create some kind of different setup uh, that makes more sense Yay. for themselves. Yay! Mm-hmm. That's I mean I've been yelling about that for twenty years, uh, mm-hmm. but they don't listen to me, Ross. Uh, but you know what? Uh, I have watched the Money Game the documentary about LSU and NIL and everything. And uh, our guy here is very prominently featured in the money game. You did a fantastic job. Where did you shoot that? It was a palatial estate yeah, that they, you were uh, in. Thanks. Oh, yeah. That, that was, they wanted to come over to my house to shoot that. And I was like, no, you don't want to come over to my house to shoot that. So <laughs> they rented an Airbnb, I believe, like a home here in D.C. They came up and uh, a lot nicer than my home. And, and uh, we shot it. Yeah, we shot it there. It was it was long. Um, I think I spent three, four, maybe even five hours with them. Uh, but um, I, I'm glad it, it came out well. I, I haven't watched um, all of the, the series. I've watched, I think, the first two, maybe the first three. But I'll, I'll get around to it. But they, they did a nice job. They did. And if you want to see Delhi in the flesh, you'd see it on the yeah. money game. So go watch. I think it's Am- Amazon, right? It's Amazon. Um, yep. Right, Amazon. All right. Uh, Ross Dellinger, y'all follow him on Twitter. You probably already do. But does an awesome job covering all things college football. Thanks, man. We appreciate the time. All right, Matt. Yeah. All right. See you later. That's uh, Ross Dellinger. It's after further review. We're brought to you by Supper Club. Oh, they're reopen Tuesday to Saturday. Close Sunday, Monday. Great opportunity to get by Supper Club. Y'all, it's an open date weekend. Maybe dinner plans this weekend could include... Supper Club. Worth checking out to see if they have any reservations available this weekend, Friday or Saturday, if you want to get in there. Experience Supper Club. and telling you about the new menu items really since uh, since the summer. Fired up about that. The Japanese Omi beef. My goodness. That's from the that's from the farm in Japan that's 500 years old. They used to feed this to samurai because they thought it had special powers. It's amazing if you want to try that out. Of course, you can always just get a, a, a an exquisite USDA prime choice cut of meat but they've got so many great other options as well. The new menu items that include the lamb chops. I love the veal cutlet, the veal, the veal parm. I told you about the veal parmesan. It's amazing. Uh, they have the veal cutlet. They come serve it table side, and then at your table, they lay the, the layer out of the hot skillet of the cheese and the parmesan, everything in the, in the red sauce over the top of a table side, so it maintains that crisp texture. Y'all, Supper Club is an experience you have to try. SupperClubBTR.com for your reservations. SupperClubBTR.com. It's Supper Club. Back open. They'll be open here about one hour from right now. Check them out tonight at Supper Club. All right, thanks to Deli for joining us up. I got bad news. Uh, Sean Salisbury just texted me. He's in urgent care, so uh, he is not going to join us today. I totally respect that. No worries, so we'll pivot next hour. It's a bummer. We'll catch up with Sean either later this week or or next week. Let me knock out a quick break. When we come back, um, there is a little bit of news around the NFL today. Um, one of the best receivers in the NFL is asking his team to trade him, and there are some whispers that the Saints could be on the short list of potential trade partners. Should they be? We'll talk about it next. Say far. After further review. Y'all be on the lookout. If you are not yet following Duplessis Builders on their socials, you got to go follow them. At Duplessis Builders. Because I told you uh, this past Sunday, uh, I was able to go do a, a video shoot, an NIL shoot with Kyron Lacey and five-star LSU running back commit Harlem Berry. I uh, got to do a long-form sit-down interview with those two guys, and they're going to start releasing some of the content sort of in short forum clips across their their socials, you know, be it uh, uh, Instagram, Facebook. So make sure you're following Duplessis Builders. Maybe more importantly, if you've always wanted a pool, maybe you got that pool, you want to build the outdoor kitchen, you need to give Duplessis Builders a shot. Go to the website, duplessisbuilders.net, duplessisbuilders.net, pictures and videos of all their great work, their custom pools, outdoor spaces. Remember, I love this line. It's a line from Gucci, but quality is remembered long after price is forgotten. That is the key to what Derek Duplessis does. It's all about quality. Duplessisbuilders.net. 
After Further Review, powered by Sunshine. Your hometown, John Deere dealer in Louisiana. Armor's tan. She's the only one who really understands what gets me. She thinks my tractor's sexy. Yeah! Big shout out to our friends over at Sunshine. And make sure you get to sunnyquip.com. Sunnyquip.com. Get your tickets. That uh, raffle for the John Deere Gator, the LSU-themed John Deere Gator, is going to be here before you know it, pulling the winner of the Vanderbilt weekend. All the proceeds from the ticket sales go to 4-H and FFA. So get to the website, get your tickets today, sunequip.com. Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer. In Louisiana, um, I had this to talk about today because uh, it had been speculated upon this week. Uh, And now, all of the big dogs who report on the NFL have this. Uh, Schefter is reporting, as are Rappaport and others. Uh, The Raiders have informed other teams they would consider trading wide receiver Devontae Adams uh, for a package that would include a second-round pick and additional compensation. So, um. Naturally, one of the teams that's being thrown in the mix there, uh, along with, uh, coincidentally, uh, the Saints' opponent this week, the Kansas City Chiefs, after the injury to Rasheed Rice, are your New Orleans Saints. Um, and it was interesting because I saw this earlier today. At uh, I believe Saints Wire plucked this up. It was um, it's a YouTube show named uh, Paul Esten. I don't know who this is, but it is a YouTube show. And the guys at Saints Wire found this interview from over the summer when Randy Mueller, who started working with the Saints back around the draft and then was added to the to a role in the, the pro personnel department in August. Um, Randy Mueller was asked back then, in the, earlier this year, if they were going to do a trade for um, for Devontae Adams. You know, what would you would you get for Devontae Adams? He said yeah, he would not go. First, he said it could be maybe a second rounder that could be conditional if he meets certain you know, thresholds, but really a conditional type stair stepping compensation, really like a, a second round pick. And lo and behold, this apparently is what the Raiders are asking teams for a package that would include a second round pick and additional compensation for Devontae Adams. Um, say this all the time, so just to, to be very upfront. If I believe that every general manager, if you're doing your job and doing it well, then you are always considering every option to make your team better. And sometimes it's just not going to make sense. But you don't want to you don't want to give yourself a no without having the opportunity to let someone else tell you no. You can't be afraid of rejection. And with Devontae Adams, it's one of those players that I think you have to consider the possibility of what he would mean for your team. Let's talk first about on-field, and then we can get into the other ancillary stuff. So first and foremost, would Devontae Adams make you a better football team on the field? Absolutely, unequivocally, not even a question. Yes, Devontae Adams makes you a better team on the field. The New Orleans Saints, all throughout this entire offseason, we've talked about two position groups that for New Orleans were thin and not very talented. It was the offensive line, number one, where you return only two starters. You're trying to salvage Trevor Penning at right tackle. You have a a rookie at left tackle. And then an NFL journeyman who's played well in Lucas Patrick at left guard. And then a lot of unknown with Nick Saldaveri and Landon Young. I mean, you get it. The other is receiver. Because after your first two guys, who many of us believe are very good, Chris Olave is proving to be a legitimate number one, and then Rashid Shahid, who has stretched the field deep threat potential. After that, your receiving group is a hodgepodge of bland average to awful. I mean, we're talking about Cedric Wilson and A.T. Perry and Equinemius St. Brown. My God, you have an undrafted free agent out of an Ivy League school named Mason Tipton who made your team and is catching passes in the fourth quarter of a one-score game. You're down in the fourth quarter to Atlanta, and you're targeting Mason Tipton. Y'all, like, that ain't good. I don't need to spell that out for you. If you're a contending team, that ain't good. So, yes, does Devontae Adams make you a better a better team if you get him? Undeniably. And it's worth mentioning, you got the Fresno State connection with Carr. 
He had been in Green Bay, went to the Raiders to pair with his Fresno State teammate, Derek Carr, as we all well know. It didn't go great for those guys a year or two years ago. And then Derek Carr obviously comes to New Orleans last season, and now Devontae Adams has just been sitting there catching passes from Aiden O'Connell and Garner Minshew. And uh, who else was there last? I mean, somebody. I mean, they used like four quarters. You remember who else was Wasn't there Garoppolo? Last year? Yeah, that's right, Jimmy. Yeah. G, did, but he did he play it all last year? Go, th- isn't this a good illustration of like, yeah, you're a great receiver, and your career you go from catching passes from Aaron Rodgers when you were considered ar- arguably the best receiver in the NFL. I mean, three years ago, this guy was considered arguably the best receiver in the NFL, and you had a rookie Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson who were challenging that, and then you got guys like Ceedee Lamb who've been outstanding. But, I mean, three years ago, we were talking about Devontae Adams as the best receiver in football, and now he's just a forgotten man. I mean, he's got 18 catches on 27 targets this year. I mean, they have targeted Devontae Adams 27 times. Y'all, the Giants targeted Malik Neighbors 27 times this weekend. I mean, it's like, what are we, what are we talking about here? You stink and you can't get this guy the ball. Um. So, yes, uh, even still, after having gone to Las Vegas, the last two years with the Raiders, he still had 100 catches. You know, he had 123 his last year in Green Bay, 100 in 2022, his first year with Derek Carr in Vegas, and last year he had 103 receptions. So you're still talking about, even at 32 years old, a productive receiver that makes you better. Here's the problem. This is always, always, always the point I bring up when you're going to make a trade for a player. Would you want to trade for the player? Yes. Do you want to trade for the contract? Remember, you're not just trading for the player. You're trading for the contract. You are giving an asset to get the player, but along with that player comes the player's contract. So when you look at Devontae Adams' deal, over the next two years, Devontae Adams carries a cap hit of $44.1 million in 2025 and in 2026 before he becomes an unrestricted free agent in 2027. We could look at the dead cap money, which is significantly less, but you're not getting rid of Devontae Adams. If you trade for him, he's going to be part of your roster. So are you willing to allow Devontae Adams in 2025 at age 33 and 2026 his age 34 season to count $44.1 million against your salary cap in each of those two years. And let me remind you as well that you've got Derek Carr on this roster as well. And for better or worse, I've told you this, you are financially bound to Derek Carr. After you restructured him this year, you're financially bound to Derek Carr for the next two years where he's going to eat up more than $50 million of your salary cap. And if you want to restructure it, fine, but you're just kicking the can down the road even further. So... If you want Devontae Adams, would you give up a second-round pick for the opportunity? And and then other whatever other compensation might be in there. Would you give up a second-round pick to take on a contract where you're going to have to pay uh, Devontae Adams $44 million for the next two seasons for a guy that's going to be in his age 33 and 34-year seasons? That, for me, is hard to justify. Now, For the Kansas City Chiefs, that's an easy decision. Saw a similar conversation today about Amari Cooper. If he's a potential trade target at the deadline. Yeah. The Kansas City Chiefs, who have this window with Patrick Mahomes where they are trying to win a Super Bowl every single year. And you just lost Rasheed Rice. You got Xavier Worthy. Juju's probably going to get more targets now. But... You have an opportunity to maybe get Devontae Adams and give up a second-round pick for it if you're the Kansas City Chiefs. Hell yeah, you do that. There ain't no value in a second-round pick like what Devontae Adams could bring to your team this year. If I'm the New Orleans Saints and I'm thinking about trading for a player, it's not on the offensive side. It's not a wide receiver. It's an offensive lineman. Because you're going to be without... You're starting center for two months. And you're just trying to hold your head above water to try to be able to make a run late. 
Do you honestly think this team is going to be able to do that when you look at the schedule it has ahead? Now, maybe your answer is yes. And if your answer is yes, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not here to try to convince you one way or another if they will or won't be contending for anything by the time Eric McCoy comes back. But right now, you're a 2-2 two and two football team. You play the Chiefs this weekend. I don't think many people feel awesome about that. You come home against Tampa, home against Denver on a short week. Best case, in my opinion, you lose to the Chiefs, you beat Bucks and Broncos, you're four and three. Best case. You got to go back to back to LA to play the Chargers, to Carolina to play the Panthers. Winnable games, but you're crisscrossing the country. That's tough travel. Then you're home against the Falcons, home against the Browns, home against the Rams. That's where you can make hay, but then you finish at the Giants home against the Commanders, at Green Bay, home against the Raiders, at Tampa. The road schedule is brutal. So what are you? do you really think that you're a contender if you add Devontae Adams? If the answer is yes, then I'm okay making the trade. I just don't believe the New Orleans Saints are a contender. I don't believe they are Devontae Adams away from being a legitimate contender to win a Super Bowl. So if that's the case, do you want to have that albatross around your neck from a salary cap perspective and give up a second round pick, which is a future asset that can help you get younger and help you in your salary cap situation by having potentially a young starter coming up in this year's draft? That is the big issue I have. So the Saints would absolutely be right to vet this situation to see what it would take to get Devontae Adams, to maybe pair him with Derek Carr, to give Carr another another weapon. Because listen, you're financially committed to Derek Carr for two more years, so you might as well do everything you can to try to make it work. But are you really willing to continue to mortgage your future for a, a present where the ceiling doesn't appear very high? That's the question the Saints have to answer. And they've given us the answer by the way they handle their cap situation and have handled their cap situation. I just happen to disagree with it, but we'll see what they do. Uh, the Raiders are inquiring about, uh, have let teams know they are uh, willing to entertain trade offers for wide receiver Devontae Adams. We'll see if the Saints get in the mix. All right, if you want to react, you can email us, tweet us, text us, 225-396-4400-396-4400. We're brought to you by Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. Energy efficient replacement windows, beautiful entry doors, hardy plank vinyl siding. They do it all. Oh, yeah. They do indoor shutters as well. Hey, schedule that consultation with one of the uh, the associates, associates over there at Relief Windows. You can go in and you can check out the 3D model that I always tell you about. You know, if you're like me, you're very visual. Like, it's hard for me just to imagine what something would look like in my home. Like, I would, it would help me tremendously if I could see it. Well, instead of looking at a flip book or a little sample, you can go to Relief Windows, and they have this 3D technology whereby they will show you what those windows, what those doors, what that siding would look like on the home through this 3D model system. Very cool. If you want to check it out, you can. Schedule that consultation with our friends over at Relief Windows. Go to reliefwindows.com, reliefwindows.com, or you can always give them them a buzz at 288-8138, 288-8138. Airline Highway in Prairieville, or go to reliefwindows.com. Windows door siding, oh yeah, they do indoor shutters as well. Relief Windows and reliefwindows.com. Okay, y'all, um, been a good show. We appreciate y'all for being here with us. Thanks to Ross Dellinger, who is here. Shay Dixon, uh, a little more than an hour ago, we talked some recruiting, as we always do. His big uh, recruiting weekend for LSU as they doled out uh, several quarterback offers for 2027. If you miss any of that, you can catch it on demand. Just search after further review on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. You'll see it there. And if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for being there. Please um, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Okay, um, it's after further review. We'll knock out a quick break. Brian Kelly... Uh, does meet with reporters here in about an hour from right now after this Tuesday practice. So we'll get an update on how the open date is going. But Brian Kelly did have his, even though he didn't have his media availability on Monday, he did visit uh, with uh, Paul on the Fine Bomb show. So let's hear some of what uh, Kelly had to say about this uh, this open date when we come back. And it's an interesting perspective that Yahoo gave as they graded every SEC team through the month of September. LSU's grade may surprise you. We're going to get to it next. Say far. After further review. Y'all, it's October the 1st. Uh, You know that. You have a calendar. And October means it's time to put away 
all the pastels, all the summer colors. It is officially time to start thinking about and moving toward fall. And Clegg's Nursery can help you do it, y'all. Time to get those earth tones, the oranges and browns and greens and yellows. And nobody can help you decorate for fall quite like Clegg's Nursery. Get by any of the four locations in the greater Baton Rouge area. Segan Air Airline, LA-16 in Denham, Mid-City on Donmore, and the Garden Center on Greenwell Springs. I tell you every day to buy local, shop local. Check out their fall decor displays. Hump, uh, pumpkins and hay bales, squash, gourds, scarecrows. They got it all. Amazing displays. You can see if you want to decorate your front porch, your back patio, your office space. Go see our friends today. Buy local, shop local at Clegg's Nursery. After further review, powered by Sunshine, your hometown, John Deere dealer in Louisiana. She thinks my tractor's sexy. It really turns her on. Uh, you know, sometimes it can help, um, especially around an open date, uh, to pull back, take the 10,000-foot view. I often say it's the old saying, I like the expression, it's hard to see the forest through the trees. And, you know, whenever you are in the throes of a football season and you're just you're living so close to the action and you're living week to week you know we we pine over football season for for months it gets here yo we have like in a blink do you realize saturday is 6 weeks into the football season LSU's already played 5 games you're almost at the halfway point of the football season it's insane how quickly it goes, but that's like anything else. So if you're a parent, like you blink and you're like, how did my kid, where did the last 18 years go? But it just, it happens that quickly because you're you're living it so closely every day. We seldom take time to step back, take the 10,000 foot view. And so I think in particular, as we look at this LSU team, we have focused so intently on the nuance that needs to be fixed in order for this team to get where they want to go. What I mean is we have focused a lot on, man, the safety play has been rough. they got to improve there. They've rotated six guys at that position the past couple of weeks to try to figure out who the best guys are going to be. Mm, the rushing offense isn't what we thought it was going to be. How are they going to improve without John Emery and what's going – like very, very nuanced conversation. Which is why sometimes it's helpful to pull back and say, okay, where actually are you? And Yahoo Sports, and again, this is just one publication, but it's an it's an outsider's perspective, not looking at it from from deep within the roots of the of the program. They've pulled out and taken the big picture perspective. They looked at LSU and every SEC team, and they graded each team, each program, through the month of September. They gave them a combined grade on what they did on the field and in recruiting, right? And LSU only got one commit in, in September. It was a Buddy Mathis, the defensive lineman. But they, they looked at LSU, and they gave LSU... Pull, thank you. They gave LSU an A-. minus. On the month of September. Um, I mean, I'll quickly read through. After a season opening loss to USC in Vegas, LSU's won four straight. Although it hasn't always been pretty, especially at South Carolina for long stretches against UCLA. South Alabama could have been a tricky game. But Tigers took care of business 42-10. to 10. Before a bye week as LSU prepares for Ole Miss in a couple of weeks. Then they mentioned the one commitment with Buddy Mathis. And that LSU has the second most five stars in 2025 behind only Ohio State. Grade A-. minus. Given the LSU program in September, an A minus. If you polled LSU fans, I don't think that would be the response. And I'm not sitting here trying to tell you that where the program is or this team is right now, maybe a better way to say it, is where we all hope or fancy they'd be because you want to be competing for championships. And while LSU is ranked in the top 15 and have everything mathematically still in, in line for them, um, it doesn't feel like that a lot of times when we focus and harp on and intently focus on what they have to fix. But, y'all, I know this isn't going to help make it feel better, but it's just perspective. 
Go back to USC. You're in a tie ball game. Well, I guess you were down three. You're down three in the fourth quarter. You're driving. Garrett Nussmeyer has an open Aaron Anderson in the flat, and he just missed him. I mean, Garrett has been so awesome this year. I mean, he leads the country in completions. He has been incredible. I mean, you could count the number of bad throws he's made in five games on one hand. That was one of them. In a big spot. If Nuss hits Aaron Anderson in the flat, Aaron Anderson probably scores, and maybe you win that game. And if you win that game, you're a top, you're an undefeated top 10 team in the country right now, feeling focusing on everything that's good instead of magnifying the bad. Flip side, look at the Alabama Georgia game from this past weekend. I mean, Alabama's ranked number one in the country right now despite blowing a four-touchdown lead on their home field. But because they made the play at the end to win it, the narrative isn't about blowing a four-touchdown lead on their home field. It's about how incredible Ryan Williams is, and he is incredible. Don't I'm not saying anything. Like, he is amazing. Uh, it's Kalen DeBoer in year one. They're number one in the country. They just beat Georgia. That That's the narrative. But how, how close those things are to changing based on the result, where the way it played out doesn't change at all. It's just the, re the result that dictates the narrative around something. Listen, I don't think this LSU team is a championship contender. I'm not saying that. I don't think they're a, a, a national championship contender. I don't think they're an SEC championship contender. I don't think this team is good enough on a given day to beat Texas or Georgia. And I think one of those two teams is going to win the league. Uh, with respect to Tennessee, I think Tennessee could be in there as well. I think those are the three best teams in the league. Um, I think those are the three most complete teams in the SEC. Um, but I still think this team has something in it, a day where they do what Kentucky just did, where you put together the right game plan, you play your best game on that given day against the top opponent, and you win. And maybe that'll happen against Ole Miss this weekend. Maybe it'll happen at College Station. Maybe it'll happen at home against Alabama. I don't know. But it's an, it's, an, it's an undeniable, inarguable truth for every team in every sport ever throughout the course of a season. You will play over the course of a year your best game and your worst game of the year. Everybody. And the hope is your best game comes against one of the best teams you have to play in, in a very meaningful game. And that your worst game comes against a lesser team where you can overcome it. Like for Georgia, I, I would submit we're probably going to look back and say their worst game of the year was, I don't know, committing four turnovers on the road against Alabama and giving up a safety and losing that game in dramatic fashion. Tough. You didn't play your best game. You lost. So we'll see what that looks like for LSU. Like, you know, LSU's worst game of Brian Kelly's first year was that Tennessee game. Y'all remember that? Saturday morning, Tiger Stadium, man, you fumbled the opening kickoff, and it was Murphy's Law, man. Everything that could go wrong did, and you got waxed by a really good team. But you also played a really good team in, in Tiger Stadium in Alabama. You beat them because you played your best that day. So what's LSU's best going to look like whenever it shows up, and who's it going to show up against, and then what are you playing for by the time you get to November? A lot of that's going to be determined a week from Saturday. But... Perspective matters. And Yahoo gave an outside perspective. They give LSU's program an A- minus right now through September. Sometimes it, it, it's hard to see the forest through the trees, and it takes someone from the outside to be able to give you that perspective. By the way, Brian Kelly was asked on the Fine Bomb, on the Fine Bomb Show about what he thinks his team is and where his team is as they hit into this first open date. I think now we're at that level of making sure we have the right personnel in place. I think we've seen enough now going into week six where we're clear on who we want on the field. Now it's working on some of the, the deeper level things, you know, some of the technical areas that we want to get better at in terms of, you know, some of our run game, uh, some of the technical areas that we want to be better at in terms of pass rush lanes, how we want to click off working inside out on, you know, some of the mesh routes and things like that. So a lot more technical work this week that we'll spend on that will allow us to get better as we get into SEC play. We'll see how much better they can get. All right, y'all. It's after further review. Our Tuesday shows are powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. Quick break. Come back. Muse will have Tigers in the pros, and then we'll kick off hour three. It's AFR. AFR.
Brought to you by River Cities One Hour Air, where they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. 752-0001-752-0001 or onehourbr.com. Spell it out, onehourbr.com. Remember, you see so many of the yellow vans and trucks driving around town in your friends and neighbors' driveways because they, like I, trust River Cities One Hour Air. Give them a buzz, 752-0001. They've been around for 40 years servicing the greater Baton Rouge area, and they've got more than double the amount of five-star Google reviews as the next closest competitor because they do exceptional work, and so many of your friends and neighbors trust them like I do. Joe Shelton said this five-star review. Mr. JJ with One Hour Air is exceptional, experienced, professional, expert technician with great passion for his craft. Communication skills, customer engagement, he'll make sure you understand all the options, provides excellent feedback, helps you prioritize the value of the company service he can bring. Another five-star Google review. For River City's One Hour Air. 752-0001, where they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. After further review, powered by Sunshine, your hometown, John Deere dealer in Louisiana. She likes the way it's pulling while we're tilling up the land. All right, wrapping up hour number two. Big shout out, Sunshine, your hometown, John Deere dealer in Louisiana. Awesome people over there. Big shout out to all the farmers in Louisiana, man. The engine that make this state go. We appreciate y'all. And, of course, our friends over at Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. All right, uh, Muso, Tigers in the pros. Why is Jeopardy? Tigers in the pros. They still bleed purple and gold. They're just really rich now. Uh, oh, that's, that's the wrong game there. You uh, got the daily double, Muse. Did you? You got it? No, I didn't. He got oh, it. Oh, he got it. There's the Daily Double. There it is. Take uh, Famous Chinaman for 400 Um, Houston- I'll take swords for 500 Houston Astros uh, fell to It the- began with a bloody ass. <laughs> fell to the Detroit Tigers in the wild card round here. So game one, I should say, Shut the wild up. card series. Alex Bregman was two for four in the ball game, though. A couple singles for Bregman. <laughs> They're back on the field, back at it tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, I don't, I don't know which. Yeah, 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 yeah. Guess that baseball game was on ABC. Then I would ever imagine. Yeah. Uh, PFF went through and graded all the uh, first rounders, all the rookie first rounders who were playing so far through four weeks in the NFL. And as you might imagine, the LSU guys graded out phenomenally. We'll start with Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels was given an overall rookie grade of 83. That is first among rookie quarterbacks. No surprise. He graded out just 82-7 last week in four snaps, and he had his first turnover. He's just being incredible as Jaden Daniels is. Malik Neighbors, much of the same, and he's being targeted 800 times a game. 80.4 is his grade. That is first among rookie receivers in the NFL. Not to be outdone, Brian Thomas Jr., who, by the way, is not only the best offensive weapon the Jaguars have, he's the only offensive weapon the Jaguars have this year. The fifth highest graded rookie receiver, 71.6. 86 yards receiving in the last game. How about this? Six receptions, five of those six receptions either went for a first down or a touchdown. He's been absolutely in fuego. So, major hat tip to those guys as well. That's Tigers and Press. Presented by Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, lmfj.com, lmfj.com for Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Y'all check them out online or get by and see any of their locations. Baton Rouge, two locations in Baton Rouge. New Orleans, Lafayette, Shreveport. Of course, online at lmfj.com. You will never, ever, ever find a lab or man-made diamond In the case, every diamond comes from one of the finest diamond mines in the world. Mr. Scott goes and does these buying trips uh, multiple times a year over in India. Some of the finest diamond mines in the world to bring back the best selection. So when you're dealing with Lee Michaels, remember, great selection and the Lee Michaels experience. Look, big box stores, you're going to get a cookie cutter selection. Very impersonable. You go to a boutique, you're not going to get quite the selection. You're going to overpay. You go to Lee Michaels, it's the perfect sweet spot. They're big enough to be able to buy in bulk to give you the best prices. They have a great selection. If they don't have what you want, they'll find it or they can make it for you. And, of course, you'll always get the Lee Michaels experience. LMFJ.com, LMFJ.com. 
for Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Uh, remember, you can always email uh, email us, tweet us, or text us in the 225-396-4400-396-4400. Uh, Garrett Pizzolato said the Raiders are willing to trade Devontae Adams. Maybe we can make the Emperor of Empty Yards great again. <laughs> I mean, it felt like for a couple of weeks there we were going to have to retire it. I mean, he was so good and so efficient. He was anything but. I mean, he was the emperor of very meaningful yards there for two weeks. And then, not so much. We did talk about Devontae Adams earlier this hour, if you weren't here. Uh, Adam Schefter, others are reporting that um, the Raiders are willing to trade Devontae Adams. Could the Saints potentially uh, be in the mix for him. The other team that would be very obvious is the team the Saints play this week, the Kansas City Chiefs, who we learned Rasheed Rice is likely going to be out for a bit. So uh, we'll keep you posted. All right, Sports Center coming up. Stay here. AFR. Hey, check out Optimize, uh, generatorpeople.com, generatorpeople.com. If you're thinking about a Generac automatic home standby generator, of course you want the generator people. I, I, I've told this story before, but I'm always. Uh, impressed. You walk into the front door at Optimize, their, their headquarters uh, in Baton Rouge, and right behind the front desk, there's this big case. They have all these, these Generac trophies as the top dealer in the state of Louisiana, one of the top national dealers. And it becomes pretty apparent why, you know, what they've been able to do over at Optimize, because they focus on one thing. You know, whenever you call Optimize, the technician that comes to your home, he does one thing. He installs and sells and services Generac Automatic Home Standby Generators. It's not an HVAC company that has a generator division. That's why they're the best. They're the generator people. So go to generatorpeople.com.